uh, Alan, you, I've seen, I saw it last week. Mm-hmm. You saw, I saw it, it last night. You saw I it last literally, night. literally six hours ago. Okay. So I want to hear your thoughts on the Northmen because I, sir, I, I did the bad guys first. Now it's your turn. Yeah. Uh, kick it off for our review of the Northmen. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I went basically because of the interview and, uh, and also you, you'd highly recommended it. And I think, you know, I was kind of preparing myself because I believe you said like the second half was like a horror movie. And so I was kind of preparing myself for that. But what I, I think ultimately when I felt like it was a kind of a dark version of Braveheart. Um, no, you know, I, mean, I, I wouldn't compare it necessarily to Braveheart. I would well, say- in the sense of uh, the, the, the story, the grand story being told, the one of kingdoms and of, of men and, um, and, and then the violence in it. You know, it, it, I think Braveheart was much more in the daylight, while this one is much more in the dark. And um, and so, you know, I don't want to necessarily rehash the story because we've talked about that already. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I'm I get fairly squeamish at this stuff, and and definitely this movie uh, made me squeamish. It's it's very gory, it's very violent, and uh, and there's definitely a market for that. And um, you know, and I'm constantly having uh, to look away at the camera. But uh, yeah, the, it's, you know, I think there's a refreshingness to it in the sense of I've not seen a story like this in a very long time. And I think that's why I bring up Braveheart. You know, it's, it's been a long time since I've seen a story like that, uh, that, that just really gets gritty and down to earth. And, um, you know, and just tells a, tells a really good story. And, and clearly I've, I've learned a lot more about Norse mythology than than I have in my well, entire let's, life. Let's actually get into it a little bit because I talked to yeah. I talked to Eggers about this, and we'll you'll see when we discuss in in the interview. But the but the uh, the time period that this is kind of set in is like the nine hundreds between nine hundred yeah. and eleven nine eighty five AD. Yeah, yeah, some, something like that. And then what it really is is just the story, and this is a this is a Norse legend, right? Of Prince Almuth, and Prince Almuth, and that story is the inspiration for Shakespeare's Macbeth centuries later. So you'll see that really what this is more more comparable to is Macbeth, but it's Mm -hmm. not obvious in the beginning. It's kind of Macbeth in the, in a a little bit in in the reverse. And I don't want to, I don't want to get into too much spoil things that could be spoilery because I know people still haven't seen it, but I'll say that I would compare it more to Macbeth, uh, than anything else. And, and by that, I mean, like, this is the story that this is based on is actually, is actually the inspiration for Macbeth, Mm -hmm. the story of Prince Almuth. So it's, it's, so it's really based on, on, you know, Norse legends. So, uh, so. And the movie is not very woke. Um, there's a lot of, it's, it's almost all white people. Yeah. (laughs) Raping and pillaging. I hate that we even need to, I hate that we even need to bring it up. Like, it's just, like, there's nothing there. Sh- I mean, it's just, it's just a good story. It's, it's, it's a movie of the time and of the context of the time. And you know what? I mean, you insert something that doesn't belong in it and it's, that's going to stand out. And that's the woke moment where also, you have to have something that's not there. Also, it's very, it's, it's very much a horror film, especially in the second half, mm-hmm. because what you see in the first half of the movie the first half of the movie is actually kind of the story, the first act. Um, you kind of see in the trailer. Yeah. But then after you, you're you watching the movie and you're like, oh, we're kind of into territory that's not in the trailer. I have no idea what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, the story, may, it takes this turn sort of right about maybe, you know, a third of the way into the movie. That is such a great turn where you have mm-hmm. no idea what's going to happen. And I don't know how much I want to get into yeah. spoilers but uh i mean i just say there's excalibur elements that i think might be interpreted as horror but i i kind of interpret right. it as mythology and uh and so that's why i kind of I, I don't necessarily feel it was a horror film but much more spiritual mythology going on in the second half well it has it has elements of horror for sure i mean especially yeah. when it comes to some of the gruesome deaths i mean it is absolutely brutal and what's interesting is that alexander skarsgård for a decade was trying to get this movie made. He wanted to make a movie. And ironically, what's interesting about Alexander Skarsgård is he played a character named Eric Northman in True Blood. And then <laughs> in this movie, he plays, he's in a movie called The Northman. I just found that 
I found that interesting. I found that interesting. But it's but it's fascinating that like he um he was like you know able to pull this off in such a realistic way. You'll hear in the interview when you know we talk about it, like how, the the sense of realism. Although I'm told that there is a and if you've seen the movie, this isn't quite a spoiler, but it's something you're gonna okay. Um, th this is a minor spoiler warnings for anyone in in the chat or anyone watching live right now, uh, some minor spoilers. There's a fight with two naked men with just swords and shields. And my understanding is, is there was some digital trickery with regard to the, the nudity. Um, it's, You're talking it's, about lengthening or? Uh, I'm not saying that necessarily. <laughs> I'm just saying there's two naked. It's brutal though. It's such yeah. a brutal fight and just imagine like well that's probably how it was back then in the sense that like it's i mean you probably wouldn't want a lot of clothes because you're gonna get you know you, you're gonna get something caught on something and then you know you'll be at a moment of, of, of vulnerability it's better to just have when it comes to sword fighting i think i think clo mm -hmm. clothing optional clothing yeah. optional for sure and I mean, that's one of the two sword fights that occur between two individuals versus yeah most of the film is is more war war fighting, you know, uh, guys well, running into the village, hacking and slashing. War, yes, raping and pillaging, yes, that happens. I mean, effectively, like I say, everything that you see in the trailer is about the first third of the movie. Then it gets off into this intrigue that is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Where, and again, we're minor spo spoiler territory here. Prince Almuth, who's now grown, you know, uh, he's freaking Alexander Skarsgård, right? He's, he grows a lot in the movie, yeah. Yes, he's a kid, and then he's, he's much older man. Um, in any case, um, uh, he uh, he 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 allows himself to be captured as a slave in order to infiltrate and 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 hunt down his uncle Fiona and and take his revenge. And then the movie, and then the it's it's not something that is like a haha you're here i'm gonna get you it's like no it's this slow kind of horror movie like like it's 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 so great the second half of the movie the way the the story just sort of plays out and the audience knows what's going on the characters on screen are are are, are mystified and how that plays out is awesome and anya taylor joy is fantastic in this as well. We, she she definitely, I mean, in addition to Alexander Skarsgård and his just his physique is just. I mean, he obviously put his put everything into it, but she's fantastic in this film as well. Like her, like there's a conversation about how like men and women kind of have different strengths, and hers is she has a different she has a different card to play, so to speak. And it's I and believe it, they were naked at the time when they had that conversation. Yeah, it's just you got it's just yeah, and the cinematography, just everything about it. Um, I don't know, it's one of my favorite movies this year. This, along with RRR, a film that keeps coming up. I know no one else has seen it, but but Alan and I, uh, and Polly from Latino Slant has also seen it, but yeah, um, yeah, and, and <laughs> there's there's some there's some great. I'm starring some of your comments because <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get to them. We're gonna to get to them for sure, but it's yeah, I I loved it. I want to see it again. It's also it's 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 a slow burn, and and it just it pays off, and it's it's fantastic. So so there you go. We should go to we should go to some of your some of the comments here, Alan. Do you have anything else to add? I mean, you, would you recommend the Northman? Oh, I would definitely recommend the Northman. Yeah, uh, yeah, I. Uh, Again, we just keep going back to the this return to traditional storytelling. To, yes, to more of storytelling, and and just you know, yeah. I, I, I it's like we 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 get into these loops where we just talk about how how wrong Hollywood is going. Well, and this, uh, is an, this is an example of a correct direction, right? They spent um, what is it? Uh, focus features, yeah, focus features yeah. effectively. That's that's universal, yeah. right? I, sometimes I get the sub companies mixed up, but yeah. So it's effectively universal. They spent $90 million on this. And what I really appreciate about it as well is it's traditional storytelling. It's not, it's not weird. Like the lighthouse, I would say it's, it's hard to compare it mm -hmm. to the lighthouse. Someone asked better than lighthouse, different, not yeah. comparable, 
It's like it's like comparing. I think it evokes the same emotional levels. I mean, that's what Eggers does so well is elicit well, emotions. It, it's similar in the sense that there is a fart. <laughs> like there is a moment in the North Bend where there's a, I mean, farts are like kind of a big part of the lighthouse. It's like two guys in there and they're, they're going to fart. They're going to do guy stuff. Right. Well, there's, there's a scene, but it's played in like this sort of like, it's funny, but it's also in like this kind of like you're becoming a man. That's a, that's a healthy fart. Right. Like it's, it's uh, anyways, <laughs> I, I, it's great that like Eggers is not above, like I'm going to put a fart in the Northman, you know? Um, but I will say this, I think the only thing you could even compare this to in terms of storytelling is like, like, uh, like Conan the Barbarian, the original directed by John Milius. I still like that movie a little bit better just because, you know, I saw it when I was a kid. I've seen that movie countless times. Um, the score by Basil Polidorus is incredible. Um, the musical score here is it's, it's good. It's just not like it's. I, I, I like the Basil Polidorus. What can I say? So, but I would put it in a class with Conan. Is it is it the best barbarian film since Conan? One hundred percent. It's just very different, and it's and I'm really curious how people are going to respond to this in the sense of it's very much an art film. It has art film sensibilities on an epic scale. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there are some art house sensibilities you know for example willem dafoe's character so yeah I, I didn't even know that was him and he was on and off so quickly and uh let's see positive fandom for 9.99 thank you for that says oh hi gents uh this film is possibly the film of the year don't trust the trailer which is actually a good thing i think yeah. don't trust the trailer the trailer sort of leads you to believe one thing and it's different uh the film is a historical and culturally significant piece that rejects modernity and embraces masculinity. Well done. Yes, I agree. It embraces, Absolutely. there's nothing about like, yeah, I mean, there's nothing about like toxic masculinity or any of that stuff. So um, but here's the question I was going to ask Robert let's hear it. if he was on, but you know, he, they gave him $90 million to make it. It was shot. It was, I think it was in pre-production before COVID and then shot during COVID. The question is, is could he have made the movie today in 2022? Would, would they have given him $90 million to make this movie? I don't know. I don't know that, that question, not sure. Um, so uh, let's see. Pauly from Latino slant says Conan was comic compared to the Northman. Not that it's bad, just different. Yeah. This is Norse drama with bloodline betrayal. Loved it. Yeah. Um, actually, Polly has like a review. It's like a right out of the theater review. And usually those are like five minutes. And Polly talked for like 30 minutes. I watched it. I watched it last night, Polly. I watched your review um, right out of the theater. So that was great. Uh, cool. So uh, it's, well, let's get to some, let's get to some of these comments yeah. here. We've got a bunch of starred comments. Um, we're going to get to the comments about, Comments about Eggers we'll discuss after we we watch the Eggers interview. Um, Shane Becky says, watch the Vavitch with director commentary this morning. He was way too hard on himself. My favorite horror movie in years. iDog says, I thought it was Hamlet. Yeah, it's not Braveheart, Alan. It's Hamlet. <laughs> no, I'm I mean, just saying the last movie that was of this scale. Braveheart. Nah, the last movie you could compare it to, is, I mean, well, I guess because Braveheart is historical, Conan mm -hmm. is not historical. Conan right. is fiction, so I'll give you that. But I felt it was more like the the story of Prince Almuth, the the legend. That story is was the seed well, yeah. of Beth for Shakespeare. I mean, I, I will agree with you there. I'm just yeah. talking about the the scale of the film and the and the depth of this and the depth of the story at that point. And Horror Mike says, I like the Vavitch and the Lighthouse equally. The Lighthouse cinematography is astounding. And Infinite Main says, clothing might protect the things I don't want getting caught in anything. Fair <laughs> point. Fair point. Uh, Mudball Creative says, we were talking wieners. Now we're talking about growing. What kind of movie is this? <laughs> Uh, and then Experiment 626 says Skarsgård got back his Tarzan body for the Northmen at 100%. Yeah, I mean, that trailer's insane. Uh, Cavatino, Cavalryman Shea says, so ladies and certain men will learn about Alexander Skarsgård's curves and see what body part they would love to scrub clean. 
Absolutely. A lot Absolutely. of curves in this movie. <laughs> Max one up says Defoe's scenes were great. He definitely had a big impact on this movie, despite only being in it for a small amount of screen time. My understanding is, is that there were a couple extra scenes that were cut from the film. So yeah, yeah. I didn't even realize that was him when it, when it happened. Yeah. Red man. I think the relationship between main characters should have been more fleshed out. They kind of go from strangers to making babies, not much shown in between. Um, yeah, I, that's fair. I mean, screen time has a lot to do with it. It just, you know, I just feel that like my concern with the Northman is, is our audiences today going to embrace it mm -hmm. because it's a little, it's a little weird. It's uh, there are aspects of it you could describe as like possibly a drug trip. There are a couple scenes in there that are very freaky and there sure. are some twists and betrayals, but, uh, but well, that's no, why I ask if it could have been made if it could be made today, you know, are studios going to risk telling this kind of a story? Disney, or, Disney would never make this. Disney no would never make this. I feel like, um, I, I feel like where, where Disney is today is, um, I don't know. It's, I, like, it's like where their stock prices are. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. I don't understand what is the, why can't there be some sea change? I don't understand what, you know, at a certain point, you have to maybe look at like, should we fire people because they're not, um, they're not, uh, they're not making I, money. They're not making money. I mean, uh, yeah, like, at a, I mean, it's costing them now. So yeah. I don't think a studio like Disney could make it, but yeah, could Universal? Yeah. I mean, if you look at what Universal's done, even in their like, um, the Sing, which is another animated thing, mm -hmm. right? Okay. DreamWorks made the bad guys, um, you know. Universal made Sing, the Sing, and there's Sing 2. I'm sure there'll be a Sing 3. Those movies are fun. They're just fun. There's nothing. I, I, I really feel like they, they get it. It's interesting that like there are other studios doing what Disney would have done 10, 20 years ago now and doing it better. And I think that the audience is definitely going, going yeah. to pivot. Satan we, West says, uh, in Hollywood, people fail upward. 100 percent luke james says audiences have a duty to embrace it i would agree otherwise we'll get more crap movies it wasn't content it was an actual film yeah, yeah. i would say cinema which doesn't happen often mm -hmm. yeah uh and and mike likes tacos says disney would never make this okay i will see it then yeah <laughs> uh yeah and uh yeah uh uh, Just Rand says, I like the CGI in the fight to make two men look like bears. Scars definitely hulked around like a bear. This movie was made with so much passion and attention to detail. <laughs> Movies, 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 movies.